We have a special guest with us, Jeffrey Sachs, economist, academic, public policy analyst, and former director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, where he holds the title of university professor. He is a pr president of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and served a, as a special advisor to UN secretaries. Uh, he also authored and edited numerous books, including three New York Times bestsellers. His latest is Ethics in Action for Sustainable Development. Please welcome Jeffrey Sachs. Thanks so much for being here. Ah, great to be with you, Jimmy. Thank you. Now, you chaired the Lancet uh, group on COVID. And so I just wanted to show you this. So this is making all the news today. Uh, Elon <laughs> Musk tweets out, my pronouns are prosecute and Fauci. Now, this is causing a big stir. Now, I, I, I'm going to just show you this now. We all remember that when when this first started, if you question the origin of the Corona uh, COVID-19 virus, you were called a conspiracy kook. Here's Snopes. And they're saying, no, it wasn't made in a lab. And here's experts debunk fringe theory. This is the Washington Post fringe theory. And uh, Joe Rogan spreads unfounded conspiracy theory that COVID-19 started in a lab. So. Uh, he would Dr. Fauci actually funded that research. So now we know that that was all that was all propaganda by the big pharma bought media that was trying to muddy the waters and lie about the origin of the covid-19 virus. Right. That it came from natural sources that it came from nature. And instead of instead of it being invented by research that was being funded by Dr. Fauci at the Wuhan lab. Now, he was asked in Congress by Do by Rand Paul if he funded that. And here's what he said said that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. Do they fund now that was a lie because the NIH even admitted it a major shift. The NIH admits uh, funding risky virus research in Wuhan. The NIH letter coming after months of congressional demands for more information underscored that America's premier science institute has been less than forthcoming about risky research it funded and failed to properly monitor. Uh, Gilles Demenov, a New Zealand data scientist in New Zealand, told Vanity Fair, I cannot be sure that COVID-19 originated from a research-related accident or infection from a sampling trip, but I am 100% sure there was a massive cover-up. Now, you led the Lancet study group on this for two years. Do you think that there's a massive uh, cover up and do you think he lied to Congress? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, when I started uh, heading the Lancet Commission, I pretty much uh, not pretty much. I, I I thought, well, this was from nature. Uh, that's what the scientists had said. I had read uh, the first articles and uh, actually the first thing that I did uh, was uh, uh, create a series of task forces for this commission and one on origins. I appointed uh, a fellow named Peter Daschuk from Eco Health Alliance, who turns out to be at the center of the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I thought, well, you know, we know it came from nature. This guy's uh, out hunting viruses in nature. Why not? And uh, so I, I come at this innocently, you might say. And after two years, Boy, I, I saw a lot. I, I learned a lot. I don't like what I saw at all. I don't like how our government behaved at all. I don't like how Tony Fauci behaved at all. And there is going to be an investigation now uh, in uh, Congress. And uh, I hope they do a thorough, rigorous job because there's a lot to learn. The truth is we don't know where this came from, but there is reason to worry, real reason, of course, to worry that this came out of a lab. The main reason to worry that it came out of a lab is that when you look at the genome of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, it's got a really strange thing in it, which is this so-called furin cleavage site, which makes the virus highly infectious. And what's strange about that is two things. One is that this is the only SARS-like virus, in other words, a coronavirus from a bat reservoir of, of this type that has such a furin cleavage site. And second, what you find if you push through this narrative that was created from the start 
is that there was a huge interest by a number of scientists being funded by the NIH to stick in a furin cleavage site into SARS-like viruses to see what they might do. And you know what? That was known at the beginning, and they didn't tell us about that research. They instead created a story absolutely contrary to their own fears. And we can now trace it thanks to a lot of brave reporters and, uh, and dogged reporters and people like you that are telling this story. We can trace it hour by hour in the late days of January 2020 up through uh, the uh, mid-February when the narrative was concocted and then to March when an absolutely terrible paper uh, called The Proximal Origins of SARS-CoV-2 became the most cited paper in, uh, in the biomedical uh, research, apparently, uh, from what we hear in the year 2020. And it's absolutely awful. It's awful because it failed to say basic things about why this could have come out of a lab. And they, honestly, it's a, it's a little, it's just a shocking paper. What they don't say and all that they should have said is we don't know because we haven't seen the lab books, we haven't seen the databases, we haven't investigated. There's a part of this, Jimmy, that's unbelievable. It took me a year to realize it. In the Proximal Origins paper, at a critical point, readers can actually go online and find it. And there's a footnote. It says, uh, uh, irrefutably, this virus did not emerge from any previously reported virus uh, in research. OK, then <laughs> ridiculously, the footnote, which is footnote 20, is to a 2014 paper. When you're talking about a 2019, 2020 outbreak, give me a break. But second, what is the point of a scientist saying irrefutably it's not from a previously reported virus without saying in the next sentence, but maybe there was an unreported virus that we were working on. In other words, it's a little shambolic. And this is why we need an investigation. So. The reason why they would overreact like this so much, and in my, this is my theory, the reason why, well, uh, the reason why they would try to uh, obscure and cover up the origin of the COVID-19 virus bec because Dr. Fauci was going around regulations that uh, President Obama had stopped gain of function, a research at the Wuhan lab. So then he kind of went around that and he gave the money to this third group called Echo Health Alliance and then they funded it. And so if it turns out that the COVID-19 virus actually became about because of that funding, that means that Dr. Fauci funded the research that created the COVID-19 virus, which killed millions of people, which would make him responsible for the deaths of millions of people. And then he lied about funding that very research to Congress, which I just showed you, which is why he is a criminal. So well, is, is, would that be the reason? Would, would that was that a plausible reason why they would overreact and lie about this? It, 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 many, many uh, things are possible in this first they, they surely knew that this could have come out of a lab because on February 1, according to uh, email transcripts uh, that and uh, summaries of uh, a key call that was made on that day, this is February 1, 2020, many virologists said, mm, oh, whoa, this really looks weird. <laughs> this looks 50-50 a lab, 80-20 lab. Uh, one said, I can't imagine how this uh, could have come out of nature and so forth. And then three days later, they're on the opposite side of this. So first of all, we they knew that something was weird. Now, what did they know? We don't know. Maybe they thought, hmm. You know, it, our, our research uh, led to this. Maybe they thought, holy shit, I don't know. Maybe our research led to this or the Chinese are doing something. We don't know, but we don't want to know. And we don't want to we don't want questions asked about this. 
Uh, there's also a lot of other research underway in the so-called biodefense world, which is supervised by NIH, that they probably don't want us to know about also. So maybe they thought we got to tamp this down so we don't find out what else is going on, which is, I, I think, a pretty plausible thing. So the truth is, we don't know except exactly the quotation that you said. We do know that they concocted a phony narrative at the beginning. And now, by the way, you see uh, Fauci. Uh, by the way, I worked with him 20 years ago on, on the AIDS pandemic. I liked him. This is not at all my instinct, my preference, my, I have no, I had no ax to grind, exactly the opposite. But now you, you see <laughs> Fauci on a, he was on a, I think, I won't say which uh, which show, but it, uh, because I, I'm not absolutely sure. But he was on a mainstream media show and he was asked about the origin. And, and he said, yeah, I'm open minded. It could have come out of a lab. But NIH did not fund that virus. Whoa, that's by the way, even if he had said that two years ago, that would have been very different from what they actually said. Now he's, he says, I don't know. I'm agnostic. Maybe yes, but we didn't fund that virus. Eh, that's, by the way, not the most interesting question. And how do you actually know, Tony? Because there were lots of unreported viruses collected at the Wuhan Institute of Virology as part of this research program. You see, one of the most interesting documents that showed up, and it showed up out of a leak, not out of any uh, transparency of our government, is a grant proposal that was made to the Defense Department. And it was it was in 2017 grant proposal. It was leaked in 2021. It's called the Diffuse grant proposal, DARPA Diffuse. And on page 10, and the, and the team that submitted it is University of North Carolina, EcoHealth Alliance, and Wuhan Institute of Virology. So the three together. And in the proposal on page 10, it says there are more than 180 previously unreported SARS-like viruses. Oh and on page, on page 11, it says we are going to examine them for proteolytic cleavage sites. That's this uh, part of the gene to, uh, that um, allows the spike protein to be broken up by a particular class of enzymes. And if that cleavage site isn't there naturally, we're going to insert that cleavage site. Well, duh. Okay, that is a little bit interesting. It's kind of a handbook for how you might make SARS-CoV-2. So why couldn't they have mentioned that? on February 1, 2020, told the American people, now we need to review this work with our Chinese counterparts to look at this. And by the way, understanding that might have helped us understand the pathophysiology of this virus earlier. Maybe we would have heard earlier in February, this spreads easily. It's got a furin cleavage site. We're going to need to contain airborne viruses. It might have changed substantively how we address the virus, not just how we attributed responsibility. So these are the things that an investigation really needs to look at. So the so the people who were actually obfuscating, lying and not giving us the true uh, science on that wasn't Trump. It was actually people like Dr. Fauci, Dr. Collins, who were colluding that the emails now reveal not only to dis to, to get people off the scent, to throw the dogs off the scent of where the virus came from and that they were doing the research, which he lied about. Uh, uh, so uh, but and, also and Jimmy, one, one, if I may, sorry to interrupt, but one, one thing is interesting. This this gain of function business goes back more than a decade, but I just want to explain one thing about it. It went in and out of regulatory control, but uh, so there was a moratorium put on in 2014. It was taken off in 2017. But one thing that's very interesting is Tony Fauci always believed in it, yep. whereas other scientists were saying this is very dangerous. So the debates go back a long time. And I had a uh, Nice conversation with uh, Bob Redfield, 
who was the director of the Centers for Disease Control, of course, in the time of the outbreak of the pandemic. And he describes how he argued with Fauci way back when, in the early uh, teen, 20 teens, you know, 2012, 2013, 2014. Tony, this is dangerous stuff. The returns to this kind of research are not likely to be very big, but the risks could be very serious. And so this is a debate that goes back a long way. And I think indisputably, this is dangerous under super, I mean, dramatically under supervised stuff, to put it mildly. And interestingly, you know, a couple of months ago, some scientists at uh, Boston University, no one asked, they didn't ask any permission. Oh, they just I announced, they, they just announced we did another, another one. Dread, dreadful experiment taking a, to, taking a low lethality Omicron variant <laughs> and connecting it with a Deadly uh, high lethality Wuhan variant. And OK, gain a function of a dangerous sort, making it both highly transmissible and more lethal. And then NIH, interestingly, said, well, oh, we didn't know about that. We should look into it. And then even more interestingly, from my point of view, Boston University said, what business do you have looking into this? I and mean, this is this is a wild craziness that this is not under control. And we have never been told the truth about all of this work that's underway. We have not been told the truth about the experiments being done, what has been approved, what hasn't been approved, what has been reviewed. It has been obfuscation all the way. Hey, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, December 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And we're going to be in Tempe, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you there.